All right, the last time we left off, we were building this storefront. You guys were building these bricks, going across here, across here. We built our windows. We started to build our storefront, our doors. We were bringing in our sidewalk lines, and we brought in the lines in the street. So we can continue doing that. Uh, oh, we also started blocking in with our parallel glider where we wanted our buildings. So I've got our buildings going across here, and there are orthogonals. So let's say that I wanted to have a building here. I r ruled in my parallel, vertical. I'll, I'll bring in a parallel horizontal. So I have the edge of the building here. give it depth and it would still go to my vanishing point here. This building here that I ruled in, I can then do a vanishing point, go to my vanishing point, rule another orthogonal to it building that side with the parallel vertical I can bring in the side of the building here and I can bring in the side of the building there I actually don't really care for that I would probably do a thinner line since this building is further away and roll in my windows. And as you can see, I didn't get an even distance there, so. I'll erase. Making sure that my wheels are on the same surface. ruling in those parallel verticals. I then would rule in my horizontals. so slightly down as you can see I'm starting to build those buildings in the background all I'm doing is rolling I've got my orthogonal here and this is the side of the building that I'm shading in to help you see that side of the building and it goes to your vanishing point. Just ruling in some more parallel verticals. And I'm primarily going to be using parallel verticals and parallel horizontals. I'll have the building go right there. I'm primarily going to be rolling parallel verticals and parallel horizontals because we're looking at the same surface as we're looking here, more straight on. We're only going to see a sliver of the sides where you would have the orthogonals. The only time we're probably going to use the orthogonals is the further we get away from the center 
of the page. As we come out this way, we would use more orthogonals with the buildings. For example, here this building, I can add an orthogonal right there. And you can see that roof line now. I'm just ruling in these these parallel verticals, these parallel horizontals. I can even add things to the roofs of the buildings across the street to make them more interesting. I added a water tower to that building. to make this slightly different. I'll do the windows slightly different. And as we get down towards the bottom, this is where we'll build our storefront, where you'd have your door, your window, as you're shooting through that street. Just constantly rolling down, making sure that I'm parallel, adding all of those windows. Here I might use a regular pencil to get a little bit of a thicker line. to show shade on that side of the building. I then would also <coughs> here I'm using my vanishing point as a pivot point to pivot my straight edge so that I can make my next mark. Just helps me be more precise. And yes, it's work. There's a lot of work that goes into one point linear perspective. To sell that illusion of that three-dimensionality on that two-dimensional surface, the more detail you add, the more you sell it. So I'm going in, adding these buildings, checking my orthogonals. Will I see that other side of the building or won't I? Will it be a little sliver? As I move further away from the vanishing point, I see more of the different sides of the building. This is another side of a building. 
So you're building that, that depth. And again, these aren't stacked tissue boxes uh, with lines on them. I'm, I'm going to add things to the top. What do you see on rooftops? You know, some of them have antennas. Now I'm going to take a look at building my storefront. Let me go back to my mechanical. Trying to keep it uniform going across. more details you add, the more believable it'll be. We live in a detailed world. Once you've cracked Alberti's cheat code, uh, you can do one point linear perspective all day long. It's just a lot of work because you have to take your time and make sure that you are precise. It's these little, little details that sell your, your drawing as a, as a city. And again, three lines, parallel vertical, parallel horizontal, and then an orthogonal. I'm using only three lines, and I did not have that parallel. Notice how I have these buildings overlapping. That's what helps sell that illusion. I just hop around because I'm constantly analyzing the whole drawing. Seeing what I think should go in each building window-wise so that they don't look 
the exact same because no building is identical when you walk into a city. There's similarities, but there's also vast differences. So to give that, I, I go with the, for lack of a better term, the checker box windows. Then I go to more of a traditional uh, brownstone look to then more of a tall glass windows to more of the, the checkerboard windows again. And here I would probably then do another brownstone. And I probably would bring it here. I could even pop buildings back here going to my vanishing point as well. Constantly adding little windows. But it changes that whole scene. It gives it a sense of personality. No building is alike. this a four lane road. I want you guys to be safe, so I'll put in a crosswalk. Because lines have streets on, or streets have <laughs> lines have streets on them. Streets have lines on them, don't they? Don't they? I can then make this a broken line if I wanted to. Well, we know it as an implied line. to I could add a So what you're going to do is just continue to build your storefronts, build your buildings. 
finish off those finite details. And you've got yourself pretty much a city. We'll stop there. It's now just adding all those details and finishing off those finite details and you will have your one point linear perspective of a street complete.